uh, uh, oh, which one is the Bruticus box set? Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag, my gal. Sunday, you kissed my wife. Baby, my heart's on fire. We are reviewing the anticipated Generation 2 Bruticus box set from Transformers Combiner Wars. Known affectionately as Fruticus by some, the 1990s Generation 2 Combaticons were the recipients of perhaps the most clashing and garish color schemes that the 90s had to offer, and that's saying something. Having been given Generation 2 box sets for the Aerialbots and Stunticons, the Combaticons are the latest to be given in ugly 90s makeover. The box has the same dimensions and heft as the other Generation 2 box sets, with the artist rendition on the front, as well as profiling the alt modes. On the top of the box, it profiles the figures in their robot modes. And on the back, it profiles the combiner itself in all of its... Uh, glory. And included are shots of the figures in both robot and alt modes, as well as the multilingual bio which reads, Bruticus has immense physical power. He may not be the smartest bot, but his overwhelming strength and indestructible armor are more than enough to make him a nightmare in battle. Hmm. The Colors on the box art, at least, are sensibly muted, so perhaps it is safe to open the box and review the figure inside. Ah! Ah! Oh, ah! The colors must use my powers to tone them down. Uh, there. Well, here are the Generation 2 Combaticons out of box and in their alt modes. Unlike other G2 sets, Bruticus does not have the Generation 2 version of the Decepticon logo. It merely has the regular Decepticon logos. Ah oh, well, there's always Reprolabels.com. The set comes securely packaged, as always. And the box includes a sturdy cardboard pouch, which contains the poster version artwork of the box artwork, a collectible trading card, and a marquee of instructions for transforming each figure, as well as assembling the gestalt. Also included are the hand and foot accessories for each deluxe, and each figure also comes with a weapon accessory. The hand foot accessories are black, while most of the weapons are a very dark gunmetal grayish black. This set has no remolding that I know of, therefore these are straight up repaints of the Combiner Wars Combaticons, which is not really a bad thing since the Combaticon set is arguably the crowning achievement of the entire Combiner Wars line, based largely on molds from the Combiner Wars Protectobots, the Combaticons were remolded and retooled enough to make them and their gestalts both solid and unique, and the Generation 2 version is of like quality, with the only differences being the color schemes. Under black light, most of the figures flare up extremely well, though Brawl wins the prize as the most vivid, followed by Onslaught and Swindle. Vortex and Blastoff did not fare so well. Starting with Lemon Slot, the Voyager core of the team is bright yellow with purple camouflage spots that seem to have some glitter mixed in with the paint. There are also some parts molded in a nearly black, chocolatey brown. How this qualifies as camouflage is anybody's guess. He could only blend in at a Lady 
Gaga Concert. Onslaught retains identical features as a missile trailer. The combiner kibble is visible, but you can wince and fool yourself into thinking that it's a missile launcher assembly. While all the good parts of Combiner Wars Onslaught are intact, all of the flaws were carried over as well. The rear of the trailer doesn't really hold into place, the massive gaps are still there, and the two halves of the trailer have a slight bowing in the middle. As such, Onslaught's many tires don't really sink on the ground unless you push down on top of the trailer while rolling on a flat surface. The missile assembly can be configured in several ways. Out of the box, it was configured thusly, but as you can see, none of the parts really seem to fold into place neatly. Some prefer to rotate the assembly so it faces the other direction and then swivel the guns to match it, but it is a matter of personal preference. The official version, which has tabs and notches to hold it all in place, is to rotate the combiner chest wings down so that they are lying flush to the sides of the trailer. This also serves to cover up some of the ugly gappage. The cod piece has two notches in this section, which plug into these two tabs here. The tabs and the notches plug together to hold these two sections into place and to make sure that the missile trailer assembly is locked and solid. But the colors, ho oh ho, my, the colors. Why they picked these, I have no idea, but somehow it kind of works. Perhaps it's because they clash so badly that it becomes good. Shockwave is also meant to combine with the Onslaught trailer. On the top of the missile assembly you will notice a rounded hole here and a squarish hole here. These are meant to hold the Shockwave figure by enclosing both of the handle pegs. It doesn't plug in so much as it merely seats firmly in place. You may then have Onslaught Carry Shockwave's lazy butt into battle in style. In robot mode, Onslaught has the same articulation as his Generation 1 style counterpart, with again the only true difference being his blaring citrus camo. You still have to decide whether or not to have Onslaught holding his gun accessories, or mount them onto the back kibble for that Generation 1 style pack appearance. The set does come with a Power Master style colored version of Legend's Shockwave, so if you want Onslaught to be holding an impressively sized cannon, you have the option. And speaking of which... For more information on Combiner Wars Legend's Shockwave, see my other reviews and subscribe. Shockwave's color scheme is not so loud as the others in this set, with a really deep purple set off with some silver paint, some orange, and some joints molded with cherry red. The gun sight is still ridiculously opaque. The Shockwave Legends figure was perhaps the best Legends of the Combiner Wars line, and the version that comes with Bruticus box set has all the same strengths. Having a different painted version of Legend Shockwave is a positive rather than a negative. It doesn't do much in alt mode, it is simply a gun meant to be held by one of the combiners, preferably Bruticus. Though the standard peg should allow the gun to be held by almost any figure, the secondary peg here may interfere with holding or posing. With an identical transformation, Legend's Shockwave is da bomb. It has all the strong articulation and playability of its Generation 1 style Combiner Wars counterpart. It is clever, versatile, and a fine addition to any collection. With the neon colored chest, bits, and silver now prominent, Shockwave may not look out of place at that 
bar from Tron Legacy. I have found a flaw in my version of Onslaught. This ridge at the base of this hinge is normally flipped and reversed the other direction to hold the leg in place when you transform it, but they put it in backwards, which means that attempting to place the legs into their proper position has caused that plastic nub to nearly punch through the plastic. Shockwave earns 9 out of 10 deaths, while Onslaught's carryover flaws keep him at 7 out of 10 deaths. <laughs> Blastoff has been done over in an arctic white, with camo puke stain spotted with the same glittery paint as Onslaught, and set off with some black trim on his wings and fins. The weapon accessory still plugs in under the wing, and the hand-foot accessory still looks ridiculously non-aerodynamic plugged under the other wing. Flip-out landing gear still allows you to park Blastoff level on the ground while in jet mode. The figure is based on the solid Firefly aerial bot, and has all of the same articulation and quality as the Generation 1 Combiner Wars style Blastoff. Sadly, they did not see fit to give Blastoff a more Generation 1 style head sculpt, Instead, they copped out again by using the Quick Sling style head, done over in white. A glitterless but matching blue chestal piece keeps the figure from looking totally flat as a robot, along with some black highlights. The figure can hold both weapon accessories easily, with only the paint scheme to differentiate Generation 2 style from Generation 1, he earns an identical score of 7 out of 10 deaths. Vortex is based off the aerial bot Alpha Bravo figure, who was initially dissed by G1 purists who wanted a jet plane. However, they must have done something right with the Alpha Bravo figure because its price has spiked on Amazon.com since it was cycled out of stores, and it has been repainted and remolded almost as much as Stunticon Breakdown, with versions of the Alpha Bravo figure on Bruticus, Defensor, and Victorion. Vortex has the same glitter camo spots artfully splattered onto a lighter blue helicopter, Set off with darker plastic on the missile arms and rotors, the gun accessory can be plugged into either side of the helicopter, although as you can see, jamming it in too far can cause stress fractures, so be careful. And the hand-foot accessory can plug into the belly of the helicopter like so. Eh, yeah. nice. In robot mode, the darker blues set off the lighter blues, and Vortex has his excellent masked head sculpt. The detailing is as good as ever. Vortex perhaps suffers the least from his 90s makeover. He maintains his articulation and doesn't need blue paint to look cool. Vortex scores 8 out of 10 deaths. As an impressive remold of Rook, Swindle has been done over Generation 2 style with a kind of tangerine orange set off with the same glittery splotches as on all the other Combaticons. He has some shiny black highlights, and the paint on the front of the Jeep is so shiny it looks almost metallic. The vehicle rolls well on a flat surface, and the gun accessories can be mounted and configured in multiple ways to arm up your combatic con man. In robot mode, Swindle is set off by some black piping, and a chest section highlighted with blue. Full articulation has been ported over with this mold, allowing for superior posing and playability. Swindle can, um, hold the handgun accessory as a weapon, though it looks very silly, and the smaller gun can be held in the other hand, or also mounted to the side of the head after the order of the Skyraiden Combiner Ward Deluxe version of Hound. 
The only detriment in the Generation 2 version could be a lack of innovation, but tampering with this mold would be ill-advised anyway. So Generation 2 Swindle maintains a score of 9 out of 10 deaths. Brawl has had a rough time of it. Collectors have universally dissed his ill-designed pelvis, but in vehicle tank mode there is really nothing wrong with Brawl. His Generation 2 makeover colors are a Hulk-style green, again with the same glittery camouflage splotches. As long as all of his tabs are cinched into place, the tank remains solid and cool-looking. Weapon integration is perhaps strongest with Brawl. His main tank barrel can still tilt up and down, and the hand-foot accessory mounts fairly neatly onto the roof of the turret. The tank doesn't roll particularly well, but it does slide on its tiny tread-mounted wheels. The molding is the same, and therefore the transformation and articulation are also the same. Sadly, so is the pelvis. It has that weird floppy hinge thing going on, which doesn't really tab or lock into place properly. There is only a vague sensation that there is a ratchet tooth or some kind of notch that keeps it from being totally loose, but it's a near thing. And nearly every collector has said because of this, Brawl is the worst of the lot. And there's no denying that in robot mode there just seems to be something a little bit off with his proportions. Most collectors leave him either as a tank or as a gestalt leg. The color scheme is at least more or less pleasing with his Hulk green set off with molded purple sections that closely mimic the glittery paint. There is strong articulation in the arms, the legs, and the head, but people simply can't get over that floppy crotch. So Brawl's score matches his G1 Combiner Wars counterpart with 7 out of 10 deaths. Under black light, the Generation 2 Combaticon bots are a gaudy pantheon of color, but again, Brawl, Onslaught, and Swindle stand out the most. The Gestalt assembles just as solidly and neatly as the Generation 1 Combiner Wars version with good proportions and a very solid feel to him. The chest wings keep the torso solidly together, unlike with the Defensor and Victorion molds. Articulation is the same for Generation 2 Bruticus with a rotating head, fully rotating shoulders, working elbow joints, the fists will rotate in their sockets, the hip articulation shares the same weaknesses as Defensor and Victorion, he won't stand straightly unless you click the hip joints backwards a notch, but that gives him an impression that he is leaning backwards. The hips will rotate and splay, and the combiner ports allow for a fully rotatable and swiveling knee joints, and the feet accessories will rotate in their sockets. All of these joints work together to allow for a wide range of poses which are sadly limited by the fact that the combiner joints will not support much weight outside of a regular standing pose. Though with support and patience you can pose your Generation 2 Bruticus in many impressive ways, but be prepared to experience a lot of frustration in trying to get Bruticus to maintain that pose without falling over. The Blast Off Deluxe as an arm will still not hold up Generation Shockwave without going limp. Sorry, ladies. With most of the core body now hidden by the chest wings, it is the legs that stand out the most for the Combiner under black light. Though he is still quite a sight to see with those 90s colors. For size comparison, here is Bruticus next to Generation 1 Onslaught. Here is Generation 2 Bruticus next to Classics Cliff Jumper. 
And here is Bruticus next to a box of fruity pep. Where'd he go? Without any remolding to set him apart from Combiner Wars Generation 1 Combaticons, deciding to buy the Bruticus Generation 2 set comes down to a few basic questions outlined in this infographic. <laughs> For my part, I don't mind the coloring so much, and since Generation 2 Bruticus is as solid, poseable, and fun as the Combiner Wars Generation 1 version, Generation 2 Fruticus earns 9 out of 10 deaths. Fruit Ninja! If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell them all, and tell me I'm your own. 